Okay. What's up, Dad? Hey. <laughs> we are live on Champion Youth Instagram, um, as well as Gregory Dick out Facebook. Yeah. And YouTube and everything. Um, Love because, you guys. Yeah. What's up? Shout out to everybody that's watching. Shout out to everybody. In. Tell us where you're watching from. Yeah. Shout out where you're from and uh, who you're watching with, maybe. And even send this to uh, a friend or someone that you think could benefit from this, because we're gonna have a little fun today. Yeah. Um, so this is this is our youth hangout with PGD, who is Pastor Gregory Dickow. Um, and so I kind of have some some things planned for us, which I haven't told you about. Like I know two weeks ago when I'm we did real talk, it. and yeah. which by the way, real talk was awesome. Ooh, a couple that weeks was, ago, that was a blast. Um, and today we're still gonna have some real talk, but like there's some some twists in it, so that's why yeah. it's uh, we're hanging out. I love it. I wish I could see uh, far enough to be able to read people's names, but yeah. it's, <laughs> it's so small. We had to get the shot right, so sorry you guys are a little bit far, but we may bring it close in a sec. Um, but I want to yeah. say I love. First of all, I love you guys, and I'm so proud of you staying connected during this whole pandemic and all the anxiety that you probably have experienced and all the uncertainty. I want you to know God's got you, no matter what your situation is, no matter what your family situation is, God's got you. And he's got you in his mind, and he's got you on his heart. He's got your name inscribed in the palm of his hands, the Bible says. So you're that important to God. Don't ever doubt your significance and your importance. I really want you to know that. And I want to say how much I love, not just you guys, but I love the whole concept of Champion Youth. And I know yeah. you introduced that about a year ago or so into our youth ministry. And really, we kind of re, our youth ministry was reborn, really, in a sense. And yeah champion youth for you guys it was a god idea that god gave this man and but the funny thing is what makes it funny and what makes it so dear to me is all of these guys lives i've always called jd champ like from the time he was little and robert and roman i call these guys champ all the time i mean i could just never shake it i called it called you that from like yeah. The beginning of time. Yeah. Right. Since I was born. And it's always just been what's, you know, drawn us together. And there's just a, there's a champion inside of everybody and there's right. greatness inside of everybody. And I've always seen that in you. And I'm so pumped about <laughs> and check out our check out my Facebook page from last um, last Sunday, Easter Sunday. You got to see this guy leading oh my gosh. that song, The Blessing. It was unbelievable. So. Wow. Yeah, wow. Well, I didn't think we were going to go that deep so soon. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, why, why Let not? it out, man. Why Let not? it rip. And let, let's rip with the fun, too. I love it. <laughs> no, but what's cool about Champion Youth is you always call this champ because you saw that inside of us. Totally. Even when we didn't. Wow. Or even if we didn't. And we're still, we're all a work in progress, you know, so everyone's on a journey. Yeah, But for even sure. when we weren't at a state in our lives where we were pursuing God and pursuing the calling and you know, activating the champion lifestyle in us, he was still seeing that within us. And so that's why I think champion youth is so special. And that's the, that's the heart behind it is like, we see the champion inside every student, yes. um, whether they're a part of our ministry or not, any, any student from grades seven to 12, and even prior to that, but you know, they have their journey that they're on, but from seven to 12, we see the champion in them and we want to encourage that. So that's, that's the, the vision, that's the heart. That's the, the cry, really you know. We're and calling so. out the greatness that's already inside of you. Yeah. Nobody can put it in you. It's already in you. Yeah. And we're just drawing it out and pulling it out and and reminding you of who you of who God really sees you as. So, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna get into this little activity that I uh, prepped uh, for pops, and um, I mean my my uh, DMs were blowing up since two weeks ago about like, oh, you guys are so great together. You have so much chemistry together. Just kidding, I didn't get any DMs about that, but <laughs> I figured you guys were all thinking it anyway. And so I thought we should test how well we actually know each other. Great. So, I mean, you know, obviously you're my dad and I'm your son. And it's funny, we've been, you know, we've done life my, together. My, for... my beloved son <laughs> in whom I'm well pleased. <laughs> right, <laughs> amen. 
Um, and so I just think it's it's gonna be funny to like Rob is gonna ask us Rob's in the house He's gonna ask us a few questions. So what's gonna happen is is he's gonna say like Let's say chair or stool. This is just an example I'm gonna answer for you what I think you would answer. Okay I'm gonna write that down and you're gonna answer for me You're gonna write down what like what you think I would answer and then we're just gonna like compare and like see Like fill in the blank. We're gonna answer. Yeah, like once Rob asks a question. I we'll think know. it'll make okay, sense. Okay, got it. Um, but got you're it. answering for me. Got it's it. Like we're testing how well. I'm writing it down. You're gonna write it down and we're just gonna prove to everybody that okay. that's what we came up with. So got we're not it. cheating or anything okay. like that. I may um, fail at this. So no, I just it's want good. you to know. It's good. But Dude. failure isn't final. <laughs> Just so you know, like if, if you ever fail, it's not the end, you know? And also, if you guys have questions that you want to participate in this with, then you can press that question box and you can ask them and we'll pull it up um, just for fun, just to see how well this father-son connection <laughs> is. Um, okay, so Rob, when you're ready, you're going to ask us um, the first question and we'll go from there. All right, first question is morning person or night owl? Morning person or night owl, so you're answering for me. Right. <laughs> morning person, dad is a morning person. Can you read that? And I'm night owl. A night owl every direction. Is that accurate? <laughs> yeah, that's Did I get totally, it right? Yeah, boom. Totally. All right, next All right, question. But I got one right too. I'm one for one. <laughs> one qu next question. Right, next question. What is your favorite food? Let's toss that. Okay. Favorite food? Ah, uh, Joseph's favorite food. JD's favorite food. Do you guys <laughs> know? Somebody help me. Somebody shout it out. Um, I have mine. <laughs> okay. I put steak, pizza, question mark? Correct. Oh. <laughs> Am I correct? I was gonna go with pizza too. Uh, okay. I was thinking pizza too. No, that's fair. That's okay. fair. It's good. So. All right, you're winning. You know me. You know me more. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't think you were gonna say pizza. I, yeah, it's like pizza, burgers. You know, between the two. Love it. Next question. All right. Third question. Are you a dog or a cat person? <laughs> wow. Oh. Am I uh, a dog or a cat person? <laughs> I know everyone's dying to know this, so that's why we're doing it. Dad is a dog person? Yes. And I'm a cat person? Yes. Correct. I actually <laughs> put dog first because I was thinking about myself, so that's he got awesome. it. Yeah. I, I didn't know you actually knew that I like cats. Yeah, no, I didn't. I mean, I just My guessed. dad hates cats. I, uh, well, like... We love animals. Animals are great. God's creation. This kid, when but. I was growing up, this kid <laughs> that was a friend of mine in eighth grade, he was going on vacation or something, and he said, will you take care of my cat? And he put it in this little, this little um, cage and brought it over to my house, and I didn't even want to take care of it. So I just, but I had to feed it. I don't even know how they eat. I still don't know how they eat. I don't know how they do anything. Wow. So, <laughs> but from that day on, I was like, ugh. Don't ever drop a cat in my garage. Right. That's what he did. It might not get out. Of yeah, the that's garage. probably what happened. Um, <laughs> we actually never had pets, you know, growing up. We had, um, yeah. You did, but I had a, we weren't I had a allowed dog, to. If, but if mom's watching this, we weren't allowed to have a pet. Because the, <laughs> because the, the, well, we wanted a dog when you were young. Yeah. And, and your mother was like, um, a dog or a baby that was it and all right, of a sudden ultimatum yeah all of a sudden a baby came and um that was the last we heard about a dog nice. ever again wow sad story yes. all right next question <laughs> sorry roman <laughs> if you could travel anywhere where would it be travel anywhere right now where would it be mm, that's so tough you've been like a ton of places. yeah because so we have to, this is, this is pre -corona. anywhere, right? Anywhere. Yeah. Dang. I, I don't know if I'm going to get this right, but I'm just going to go for a guess. <clears throat> yeah, go. Italy. You got it. What Australia, do I get? Correct. <laughs> Any of my Australian mates are watching. Miss you guys. Yeah. Love you guys. Hey. We are on, by the way, for you Australia guys, 
Uh, we're on Hillsong Channel. Um, we were on Hillsong Channel, and now we're back. I think it's this, this week or May 1st or something like that. Is our So look for us on Hillsong Channel. 100%. All right. I think we're doing pretty good so far. Hey, yeah, I think right. I'm 100%. Keep it <laughs> um, okay, favorite artist, I'm assuming it's musical artist. Yeah, yeah. Favorite musical artist, or at least in your top three, favorite music artist. Okay, in the top three. So, I don't know if... The, I'm gonna take a step. I'm really gonna fail on this one. Um, you actually listen to so much music, so I don't know. Pretty diverse. All the '80s, '70s, and '80s music. I'm just gonna take a stab. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> my one is Elvis. Ooh, yep. Kanye West. <laughs> I don't know. I think I would listen to like Hillsong worship. Over I was Kanye. gonna say that, but I didn't want to say I, that. Like Kanye's awesome. Elvis, I'm gonna say I wasn't thinking that. Yeah, would, like, but Beatles, although he's in the top five, would Beatles, Beatles would have been, been um, in the top. Uh, the Jackson Five, you can't go uh, wrong there. Uh, the Bee Gees, I'm a '70s guy, so um, true. I just remember we would like drive to church on Sunday mornings and we'd listen to the Elvis Sunday yes. radio because yes. it'd be like all the, the gospel, gospel songs. The Elvis is he's so, in there. Anyway. He's top five. Okay, okay. But yeah. you said top three. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Next next question. Okay. All right. I need Maybe. to know my father. What is your... <laughs> you are failing, I need to be son. about my father's my son. House. <laughs> my son, my son, my prodigal son. All right. <laughs> what is your favorite movie, or at least in your top three? Favorite movie. Wow. <laughs> Okay, I think I know this. Top one. three. Okay. Oh, top three for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Top three like, for, for, for Joseph. I don't um, know if you would even. I don't know. It's, that's so, I don't even know if I know my own favorite movie. <clears throat> I'm just channeling myself yeah, through just you. Yeah, channel it. What? I put Braveheart as well. Uh, that's, that's top. Well, that's top five for okay. sure. I'm game. End game. Yeah, I'll go for it. Yeah. And this would be on mine too. And Rocky. Mm, oh, and Gladiator. Rocky. Yeah. Dang. I was also going to bring. And Tombstone. Tombstone, Shoot. Braveheart, Gladiator, um, End Game, Rocky. I'm, those are all in the mix. I was going to say Ben Hur. That's, but... you know, that's old school, <laughs> but yes, it's the best movie ever. Okay. All right. But it's four hours long and nobody has the patience for that Next. attention span. What was your first job? Ah, right. first job. Good question. Oh, you're putting this for me. Okay. Yeah. Do <laughs> uh, so you know how this game works? No. <laughs> I keep thinking about myself. That tells you something. I gotta. We have, we're all a work in progress. Right. I got a lot of growing to do too. Right. Um. I I don't know, but again, I have to take a stab. Like you have, ah. you have the advantage because you you knew me right. So that's when I had my first jobs. Like, there's a couple of them. Put dishwasher. Yes. <laughs> yes. AMC Theater. That was my first official job. And I still, last time I was there, I still see the lady that was his boss. Yeah. She's still there, and she Shout still out asked to Linda. Me, and she still asked for my ID. I'm like, Are you freaking have known me for the last 20 years and you still need my ID with my A plus membership or whatever the wow. heck it's called. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I also, I don't know if you know this, but I worked as a janitor for church here when I was like Ah, uh, that's 13. right. You were on was, the team. I was put to work but when we I was like We 13. didn't pay you. No pay. It's all good. So AMC first. That's why I didn't count that because right. I knew we didn't pay him. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, next Child question. labor. Don't call the police, please. Um, Next question. Uh, if you could have one, what superpower would you have? Oh. So, again. Oh, you're what you would have. What I would have. What you think I would have, at least. Okay. This is actually tough. I'm just, just going to go for it. All right, my guess for Pops. What'd you put? Flight. Yeah, I would like to fly. What is this? Spidey Tingle. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, so he's like, like don't, call, don't call it that. 
Don't call it that. That's in uh, Amazing Spider-Man? That's in the or last Spider-Man. Spider-Man 2, right? The yeah, second the one, one? Yeah, the one that ap came after Endgame. Gotcha. Oh, it's great. Dang. So good. Well, so I think, good. I think you got one wrong there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was wrong on one. Although Spider-Senses would be awesome. But speaking about flying, you wear... But that reminded me right. of... I believe I can fly. You're wearing the Chicago Bulls jacket. I love it. And did you guys see the last dance? Did you guys see it? I saw it. Pretty, pretty awesome. No, it was I need amazing. to go back and watch more of it all the way through. But from what I could oh see, God. pretty awesome. No, it was great. It was great. You got to watch that. Um, we actually have a question that popped up in here. Let's see. Let's see if it's any good. Ooh, <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers? We oh. don't even need to. Tom Brady. Yeah. All day long. Brandon, that was a stupid... Tom Brady at at forty two. <laughs> Still. That was Tom a Brady question. at fifty. Patriots <laughs> just traded Gronk to the Buccaneers. What just happened? Patriots just traded Gronk to the Buccaneers, so he's gonna play this season with Brady. Wow. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Happened. Didn't know that. Oh my god. Did you guys hear that? So the Patriots traded Gronk. Rob Gronkowski to the Buccaneers, so he's going to be reunited wow. with um, Tom Brady. Wow. How cool is that going to be? That's crazy. Okay. You want to get another one? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, if you could choose, who would you play in a movie? What movie character would you play? No, who would who would play you? Who would pl oh, who so would like, play who you? would play? What actor would play you. In a yeah. Movie? Yeah. It's so like who would play me if there was a movie? About what a movie? actor would what play actor? me? Yeah. What actor and would what, play you? And what act, I'm gonna say what actor would play you. Is it would it in their prime? Like what yeah, if they're like, older now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In their prime, your prime, you know, everyone's prime. Okay. In the right angle here. <clears throat> so who would play you? Oh. There's a couple options. But let me know what you think of this. This is like a weird question because it's not like you would wake up in the morning and like think about this, you know. Right. So I know it's kind of just interesting. And I'm older, so you guys might not get this one. Go ahead. What do you got? Yeah, okay, I put Hugh Jackman. Oh, like I'll take Wolverine. it. Wolverine. Let's end. The, let's end the show right now. I'm ending on that note. That is. <laughs> Who did you perfect. have for me? I'm, I'm I had nervous. Mel Gibson oh with Braveheart hair. <laughs> With the brave hard hair, he would play you. I like that. That would be great. I was also thinking Gerard Butler. Ooh. Because I've gotten a lot of you, comments. You, like, okay, you, I'm. All the other kids are out of the will. You get all of it. You get all of it. You get all of my inheritance. It's too easy. <laughs> Those two guys. It's too easy. Ah, it's great. <laughs> okay, I, I have one last question for us, and we don't need to write it down. We can toss these. But hey, um, that was fun. Thanks for staying with us on that, guys. Uh, next question. LeBron or Michael Jordan? Okay. Now, this is a bit this is a big debate. Now, I don't know why it's a debate because Michael Jordan is the greatest athlete of all time of any sport in any era. <laughs> you don't have to agree with me, but you're wrong. Wow. I feel like I'm handcuffed there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I yeah, I mean, like LeBron's pretty amazing. He's great. And I, I think he's definitely one of the greatest of all time. He's the greatest of this time, but he is not greater than Michael Jordan. Nobody is. Right. And let me tell you why. Okay. Okay. I didn't even have to ask. <laughs> Michael Jordan had the, the hardest competition. He went up against Larry Bird. He went up against Magic Johnson. He went up against, in their prime, the Celtics in their prime, he beat them. He took down that dynasty. The Pistons in their prime with Isaiah Thomas and took down that dynasty. The Lakers in their prime with Magic Johnson and James Worthy and Byron Scott and all of those guys and Kareem and took them down in wow. their prime. And, the, the, and Patrick Ewing and the, and the New York Knicks in their prime. He took them all down. He took them all out. And um, he was the, he, what he did was he kept improving his game. Mm. And, and ev like LeBron is great, but he's never got better at free throw, at free throw shooting. Michael, Michael Jordan shot free throws 
with his eyes closed and made it. Yeah, wow. So that was that was a lot, a lot of information. <laughs> I wonder if any girls are still watching. Um, no, sorry. <laughs> no, no. He was also it's incredible. He was also cuter. Michael Jordan was also better looking like, in his prime. Okay, I mean, but that's just my opinion. No, yeah, that's cool. That's my opinion now. Um, Other rest, rest of it if was. If you guys fact. didn't know this, Dad has a nickname, uh, which is Stats. We call him Stats <laughs> because he knows everything about pretty much any sport, any coach, any player, like all the greats, the years that they played, the years they won championships. It's pretty phenomenal. Oh, I used to. I'm, I probably forgot. I'm probably rusty now. But um, but I do want to say something about yeah. that really stood out to me in the last dance. Yeah, yeah. And it was this. And the, something that stood out to me, and then something Robert stood out to him, and maybe you can shout it out, Robert, after I'm done with this. But shout out. there's something that he said that was something that somebody said about Jordan. I forget who it was, one of his coaches or somebody from the media. And he said, the thing about Michael Jordan is he already had all the talent in the world when he, when he came to the Bulls. But every day he added something in his in his life in his game throughout his college and professional career every every day and every person he met made him better mm -hmm. and he added to his toolbox every single time that he had a chance he was always learning he was always a student he was always improving and he was always giving 100% of everything that he had and yeah. I, I thought it was really amazing <laughs> the concept of no matter how good you're doing, there's always something that you can do to take your life to the next level. And nobody has power over you to stop you. You have the power to, to make your life better. And you, and you don't have to rely on anybody making your life better. It's up to you to be, to be a learner. Right. It's not up to somebody else to teach you. Right. No, that's phenomenal. I, I, I thought this, like, we could have a conversation about Michael Jordan, especially because I think this documentary is awesome um, since, like, my generation didn't get to grow up watching Michael Jordan. You know, like, I saw when he would play, like, I saw in his later years, especially when he's on the Wizards, but, like, I never got to see, like, yeah, prime, prime, like, Chicago Bulls, like, six championships, you know, and so I think it's really cool perspective to learn more and see more inside on this documentary of Michael Jordan, who he is, his, his style of play, his training, like his mindset, you know, yeah. and you got to witness that. And so sure um, I did. just think that's amazing. like, you have that advantage Like you got to cheer for him and, and you're in Chicago, you're, you're from Chicago. So like, or you're from Detroit, but yeah, you lived in Chicago at the time during those years. Yeah. So like, that's so special. Um, <clears throat> I was thinking like, this is awesome for our for our youth ministry and our teenagers and all teenage all young people to learn from Michael Jordan's example and so just kind of how you're talking like he he was like a learner like any he really any was. time he came in contact with someone like he applied something like you said like he either added to his his skill set he added knowledge whatever and so like maybe you can give um, everyone watching the youth that are watching like. Uh, an encouragement or like how can we apply this goat mentality greatest yeah. of all time mentality that made michael jordan so amazing to an everyday life because even right now with quarantine and you kind of lose sight of purpose you kind of lose sight of life on a grant on a grand scale and like what we're living for and you know that we still have a purpose in this life and so i don't know like how could we apply michael's mindset to our everyday lives and right now our young years that shape us into the people that we're going to be. Yeah, that makes sense. No, it's fun. great. And look, this this um, this the state of the state of things, the state of the affairs that we're in right now is going to end. Right. And contrary to some people's opinion, we are going to hug again. We are going to shake hands again. We are going to sit next to each other again in church. We are going to be in stadiums together again. This is. Yes, some things have changed and we're smarter now and we're learning how to take care of ourselves better, but we are going to see you guys again and we are going to hug your necks again and all of that. Um, but when we do, when this does end, which is hopefully sooner rather than later, we know it is sooner rather than later, um, 
there's going to be people are going to uh, come back to this comparative trap you know where we have to comp where we feel like the pressure to compare ourselves and i think if there's any lesson that i learned in my life and something michael jordan displayed in his life is that he was never comparing himself to somebody else mm. he was comparing himself to what he was before mm. what he was last year what he was 5 years ago what he was yesterday what he was in the last game and he even said something that really grabbed me during this um, because peer pressure and worrying about what people think about you on yeah. social media and in school, this is, this is where we live, not just as teenagers, but teenagers become 20 agers and 30 agers and 40 agers and 50 agers and people in their 50s are still acting like teenagers because they're insecure and they're still comparing themselves and they're still seeking other people's approval. Um, but the thing that Michael Jordan said that was really a kind of a funny story to me because I, because I did grow up with some addictions in my life and God has helped me out of those. And you may be struggling with something in your life right now or you were struggling with depression or anxiety or whatever it is. I struggle with a lot of those things as a young, as a young person, as a teenager. But he said when he was a rookie it, with the Bulls, they were in a hotel ready to play a game the next day. And he, he was looking for all his teammates and he couldn't find them. And so he just went and knocked on all the doors until he found them. They, well, they finally, he finally found them at, at, late at night and they were all in the same room. Right. And he said, I saw, some, I saw some of the players, they had everything, he said, in that, in that room. They had the people that were doing their lines of cocaine. They had the people that were doing their weed. They had people that were doing the um, alcohol. And they had people that, and they had a bunch of women in there as well. And he said, I walked in there and I said, wow, if, if the cops come right now, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be just as guilty as the rest of them. I'm out. He literally said, mm. I'm gonna be just as guilty as the rest of them, so I'm out. And he said he walked right out and he left because he said, all I wanted to do was play basketball and become better. And all I was thinking about was how I got to play basketball and I wasn't going to blow that. And the fact that he did, he would refuse to give in to the peer pressure right. of the people that were doing, co he could have had any kind of lifestyle he wanted. He was that talented. He could have got caught up in all sorts of pressure and comparisons and, and, you know, wrong choices in his life, and he still could have been one of the greatest basketball players ever. Right, but right. he decided, I'm not going to compare myself to anybody. I'm not going to be in bondage to anybody. I'm going to be the best me. And that made him the greatest ever. And guess what? The whole campaign during his during his greatest years, everybody else wanted to be like Mike. Mm -hmm. Mike didn't want to be like anybody else, but everybody wanted to be like Mike. And that was the song, that was the theme, that was, and who didn't want to be like him? Yeah. They even, everybody wants to be like him now. Everybody wants to be in the next Space Jam. Yeah. Everybody wants to, you know, have the next shoe deal. He, he transformed the shoe industry, he transformed the basketball in industry, transformed the international sports industry, and um, all because, he wasn't afraid of being himself That's awesome. and not trying to be like anybody else. That's awesome. Yeah. You said two really key things that I, I wanted to just point out. Like, first of all, the irony of he didn't want to be like anybody else, but then in turn, everybody wanted to be like him. Yeah. It's almost like when you try to be like everybody else, you, you kind of lose yourself. You lose who you are exactly. and, and who God made you to be. But when you tap into that and you realize, like, you know, who God made you to be and you operate out of that and out of that confidence is the security of your identity, then like it makes you, it sets you apart, it separates you from the rest. Yeah. And then people will want to be like you, you know, want to have that confidence. And it really makes you magnetic. It's like the, the, the very thing that you, that you wanted by trying to be like somebody else is on is un, unattainable when you're trying to be like somebody else. But the very thing you wanted is fully attainable when you just be the best you and where you just embrace the, the, the fact that you are a son or daughter of God. He yeah. loves you. You're complete in Christ. 
You don't need to be like anybody else, whether the height, whether how they look, the color of their skin, uh, the color of their eyes, the popularity, how many likes they have. You don't need any of that. Just be yourself and be kind and be humble and be thankful. And you always be like that and you'll always be the best at being you. Yeah. No, that's so powerful. Like I'm even just sitting in shock just thinking about all of this. Yeah. I think it's so so applicable like even though you know some of us may not like sports or may not like you know like sweating or whatever like we can apply so much absolutely uh, from what we see in sports and the, the mentality the approach you know you have to be confident in your play you have to be confident in your in who you are in order to play well and so it just applies to life like we have to be confident in who we are in order to live well in order to lead well in order to make a difference and another thing you were talking about with mike is like he changed the shoe game he changed the the standard like it's like um he changed the culture of yeah like sports of like being great like he i feel like he set a new standard of being absolutely great. and like so now like whatever we knew as great before it's kind of like he kind of like went above that and we're all attempting to be like that and i just think like we can make shifts in our culture around us every day like by just being you know who we are and whatever like being confident and, and secure but like not settling and and like just kind of going with the flow like conforming to the world and just like doing what everyone else does no, like we good. can actually shift our culture every second of our life of our lives by just like changing our mentality and thinking higher thinking bigger having that yeah. like mike mentality you know, and I think that's something we don't, I feel like for young people and even young leaders that are yeah. watching, yeah. we don't realize our full potential of the, the ability to shift the culture we're in. Well, can I tell you something about that? That's so right and so good. And um, I like to use this illustration. And, and since we're talking a little bit about um, the last dance of Michael Jordan, most people have heard of him because he's left a legacy even 20 years after he played the game. But yeah. But, um, you know, if you could, like if I said to you, if, if you said to me, I want to be the greatest basketball player ever, no matter how good you are, no matter how great you are, you, you're never going to be LeBron James. You're never going to be Michael Jordan. Now, I'm not saying that you can't be great, but I'm saying no matter how great you are, you'll never be them, right? Right. But if it was possible to go back in time and unzip yourself and Michael Jordan could actually come and live inside of you, then you could be like Mike. And my point is, is that that's exactly what Jesus did. He came so that he could unzip us and come and live inside of us so that we're not striving to be like Jesus, mm. but he, Jesus lives inside of us through the Holy Spirit and now it's as if you had Michael Jordan living inside of you, you could perform like Michael Jordan. Now you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. You're going to be able to live a godly life when you stop trying to attain to something that's impossible, but start realizing who lives inside of you. And first John four, four says, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. And the, the greater, not only is there greatness inside of you because you're God's child, but God's inside of you because he puts his spirit inside of you. Yeah. And so you have that. And that's everyone awesome. watching has that. And that's where you get your confidence. That's where you get your sense of security, your calm, the cool demeanor that everybody wants. You can have that when you know who you are and when you know whose you are and when you know he lives inside of you. Yeah. And that's one of our mission statements or one of our key scriptures for champion youth ephesians 1 11 in the message it's in christ that we know who we are and what we're living for yeah you know? and it all it's it awesome. all stems from christ and yet yeah, we are champions and we will become champions if we're if we don't if we're not living like it right now or if we don't realize it right now but the way we get there is by identifying it's from christ it's not us it's christ in us that makes us that and so i just yeah, like, this is so cool. Like we didn't even—I don't know if you guys are thinking this yourselves or whatever—but we didn't even plan 
this dad literally walked in and I was like, hey, so are you cool with just whatever? And he was like, yeah, like, don't even tell me, like, let's just go. Like, you can't plan this kind of conversation. Um, I obviously wore my Bulls jacket because I wanted to talk about Michael Jordan yeah. a little bit, but I just think it's awesome how God uses uh, just these these references in our culture, in our sure. world. And it applies so practically to our everyday lives. And and I want to speak to yeah. to to you guys for a minute from my heart as because because I'm a young person at heart, even though I'm not young in in, in age. Um, you look young. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> but um, you know, everybody fails, and you can't be afraid of failing. You got to learn to realize that failure isn't final. I know I mentioned that earlier, but I really want you to know that. We all blow it. We yeah. all make mistakes. We all have shortcomings. We all have, have wished we could take that word back. And let those words get out of our mouth faster than we could bring them back in. Yeah. And we all wish we had another chance. And God wants you to know you have another chance. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and look, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to, I make mistakes still. But you just have to know that God's not mad at you. He's not going to judge you yeah he's not going to be against you he's he's your number one fan like when if you have when i was a kid i loved ken stabler the quarterback for the oakland raiders uh when i was in the, the, the guy could do nothing wrong even when he was found with um with cocaine in his you know in his car wow. i was like no no he's great he's the greatest i'm still rooting for him even when he threw interceptions i was like he's still the greatest even when he you know got traded from the raiders to the houston uh oilers at the time i'm like he's still the greatest and my point is is no matter what he did i was still his greatest fan and you need to know no matter what you do god is still your greatest fan yeah. he still is cheering you on he's still you know, rooting for you. He still wants you to get up even when you've fallen. And he's like, he wants to pick you up and help you up and yeah. push you along. And he never gives up on you. So don't give up on yourself. God never gives up on you. We're never giving up on you. So don't give up on you. Dang, I love that. Yeah. I was kind of laughing because we were talking about like, you know, you not being so old, but then you started pulling out these yeah. sports 1970 <laughs> back in the day. And then I was like, yeah. well, at least you look young. That's yeah. You. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you who won <laughs> Super Bowl one through Super Bowl 50 something, but, uh, no, no, that's awesome. And I think, you know, you're just a beast. Oh, you know, thanks, all man. this stuff just comes to you and you have a voice for the generations. You have a voice for the nations, a voice for all ages. Uh, all cultures, all upbringings, you represent, you know, a rough upbringing and God working in your life and turning it for good and look at the fruit of it. We are the fruit of it. Wow. Uh, everybody in this ministry, everybody tuned in. It's unbelievable. And so never doubt what God can do through you because this guy never did. And it speaks for it. Like the fruit speaks for itself. And I yeah. just think it's, a, it's such a pleasure to have you to be able to give us the time and be able to yeah, shout my out pleasure. to the young people in our church and anyone that's watching. It's seriously such an honor. Um, and so are you okay if we do one last thing? Yeah, and I just want to say, yeah, go for it. love never fails. God's love for you is never going to stop. Yeah. Be secure and feel at home in his love because anything that happens in your life you can rest in his love no matter what, no matter what. What's the next thing you want to do? Boom. <laughs> so since you're on a roll of kind of preaching, yeah. preaching to us in a good way, no, yeah, no, yeah. no negative there. What I want to get uh, everyone to do is send in, and dad, you don't know how this works, but send in an emoji, any emoji that you want. Send it in the comments, just spam the comments right now. What's gonna happen is dad is gonna pick emojis and he's gonna preach a 30 second message. You're gonna preach a 30 second wow. message. I'm, I'm telling them, but I should yeah. tell you. Yes, wow, you're the, you're okay. The preacher. Yeah. He's gonna preach a 30 minute, 30 second, sorry, am I saying minute? 30 minutes is probably what I sorry, would Sorry, my do. bad, 30 second, <laughs> I, was, I don't know why I didn't think of that. 30 second message uh, based on the emojis that are coming through. So just go ham and we just wanna give this guy a challenge and keep him fresh, uh, keep the spiritual 
the the spirit fresh in his you know is it just soul. preaching about any is it preaching so, or is it got to be i got a quote of scripture that has to do with that emoji whatever comes to you honestly okay. so okay. like you'll see here okay so we've got a smile whatever a turtle um what is that okay a turtle let me start with the turtle ready all right okay listen no matter where you're at in your journey slow and steady wins the race slow and steady wins the race it's not about how fast you go it's just keep going forward a turtle keeps going forward also a turtle has a shield around him and that shield protects him and you got to know that god has given you a shield called faith and you can always be safe when you're trusting god and believing his promises dang okay okay we got a, a t-rex working? yeah it's awesome we a got what? a dinosaur like a t-rex a dinosaur let me tell you something no matter how old you feel no matter how long you've been alive there's you're there's still hope for you <laughs> no <laughs> no matter all right that's a bad thing okay, okay. going we got bacon bacon strips bacon what's okay. coming to mind <laughs> two thousand pigs went over a cliff one day. <laughs> but Jesus knew what he was doing and he declared all foods clean. I want you to know that no matter what you like, if you like chocolate, if you like bacon, or if you don't punish yourself good. by never eating the things that other people tell you are bad to eat. Just get control of your thinking and your emotions and then you'll know uh, how to balance your diet. But don't be afraid to eat something good. Nice. Uh, what about a rocket ship? A rocket ship. Okay. Every one of us is fueled by something. Something is going to fuel us. Mm. If, you're, if you're fueled by this world's opinion of you, you're not going to go very far. If you're fueled by the anxieties and worries that you have in your life, you're not going to go very far. If you're fueled by just your college education or what degree of education you have, you're not going to go very far. Be fueled by three things. Faith hope and love. Dang. Those are the three things that want that God will fuel you with and take you to the highest level of life. Amazing. Uh, we got a butterfly in there earlier. Okay, butterfly. I got you. Romans 12, 1 and 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Ooh. The butterfly always starts out as a caterpillar. You do not start out with wings. You start out crawling. Don't shame yourself or be shamed by anybody just because you're not flying yet. You're weaving a cocoon around yourself. What's the cocoon? The right relationships, the right church, and the right words going into your eyes, going into your ears, and going and coming into your coming out of your mouth. That's your cocoon. Surround yourself with the right people and your wings will emerge. Surround yourself with God's word and God's family and your wings will emerge. Amazing. Uh, we all have like a storm, a cloud with uh, lightning and rain. Okay, a storm with cloud and lightning and rain, rain. Listen, you cannot control the storms that are gonna happen in your life. You can only control the attitude that you have when the storm hits. So don't try to live a storm-free life. Just live a life filled with faith and filled with confidence in God's love and you can make it through any storm. Amazing. Okay, rainbow? A rainbow. Okay, a rainbow, a rainbow is a picture of how God accepts everybody. Mm. Every color, every race, every background. Mm. God, we're not, we're not beautiful. We're not fully at our highest beauty until we accept and embrace people no matter what they're going through. Love never fails. Dang. Um, amazing. And then we got Roman with the pancakes. Okay, pancakes. <laughs> this is the last one. You good with this? What last is it? One. This, this would be the last one. Okay. What kind of pancakes? Just pancakes. Okay, pancakes. <laughs> here's, here's the story. No matter how flattened life Ooh. has brought you, you're still going to be delicious for something. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Flapjack. Amazing. <laughs> Guys, that was fire. Wow. wow. That was fun. Dad, you're a beast. No, I love you, man. Incredible. Um, I think that's all the time that we have for today, even though you could go on forever. No, thank you for tuning in, that you guys. That was evidence of it. Thanks for watching. But really appreciate dang. it. Guys, at least we know we have a spiritually found and biblically found preacher as our pastor who can just like 
take us anywhere. He can take anything, apply it to our lives. He can encourage us. Like, guys, we're lucky. We have it good. So make sure you remember to honor this guy with, you know, just Man. encouragement, gratitude, and uh, just the trust, you know, because he's leading our entire church, our youth ministry forward, and we're blessed. So never forget that. And look, you're my prize. You're my reward. All my kids are my reward. And I want you to know that you, you guys, look, you might have a tough relationship with your parents. Maybe it's great. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. Maybe it's so-so. Just let me tell you something. God is your father. Yeah. And take the pressure off your parents. Don't expect them to be God. God is God. Mm. And realize that your parents will disappoint you sometimes, but put your hope in God no matter what's going on in your life and everything's going to be all right. Awesome. Do you want to pray us out real quick? Yeah. In fact, I want to pray in case you're watching and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Like, God wants you to, God wants everybody in heaven with him when, when we die. And, and maybe you're watching and you're like, I'm not sure. I don't know if I'm doing everything right. It doesn't have anything to do with what you do. It's what you believe. And so I want to lead you in this simple prayer. It's simply believing that Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead. And maybe you have a loved one or maybe you have a friend. You can take this prayer to them. But I want to pray for you in case you're not uh, sure of your salvation. All you need to do is say, Heavenly Father, just repeat that. Heavenly Father, right out loud. I invite Jesus Christ into my life. Just say that. I invite Jesus Christ into my life as my Savior and Lord. I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. And from this moment forward, I'm a child of God. That's it. If you prayed that prayer, you can be sure Amen. you're going to heaven. You can be absolutely sure. And you can also know that God's going to take care of you no matter what you're going through. Everything's going to be all right. And if you did pray that prayer, let us know so we can help you with a little book that'll help you in your journey and, um, and just bless you in every way we can. Please let us know. God bless. Awesome. We love you guys. Love you guys. Stay tuned. We'll be back. Much love.